testing test 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 one two test test testing test one two test 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 today we're going to be looking at the sonos beam gen 2 this is the newly released one that supports dolby atmos and we're going to be teaching you how to tune this how to set the sonos beam gen 2 to get the most out of your new investment Okay, so welcome back to my channel, guys. So we're going to be doing the testing on the Sonos Beam Gen 2 on its own without the subwoofer and without the surround sound channel. Why? Because not everybody will have those configuration and primarily also because I actually don't have the time to run through the whole setup. And bear in mind, all these tests takes a lot of time because it is not just me randomly choosing the testing and I have to do mic measurements, I have to measure the response, I have to set up the room, I have to set up the equipment. It, it is a lot of work. And to test the combination with the Sonos 1, Sonos Play 1, with the Sub Gen 2, Gen 3, I, I just couldn't afford the time to do so. So you sit through today's video, I will teach you what each of these change will do to your system and how you perceive the sound changes and hopefully from there you can apply the learnings to your current setup be it the Sonos Beam Gen 2 with or without the sub with or without the surround so let's get to it now the purpose of sound tuning and tuning your sonic devices your speakers for best sound is to get as flat a response as possible no exaggerated bass no exaggerated mid-range and no exaggerated treble response and how we do that is um, you know sometimes Sometimes the sound engineer thinks that the bass response should be higher and when they do that, your speaker comes across as bass heavy and sometimes it sounds muddy or muffled because the bass response is too strong or they think that the treble response should be higher but it comes out as shrill and sharp and it's just fatiguing to hear for long listening sessions. So the idea of what we're trying to do with the Sonos Beam Gen 2 today is to flatten the response curve a little bit. Now, there are a couple of things that has been changed from the Sonos Beam Gen 1 to the Sonos Beam Gen 2 that you see here. Of course, the physical difference being the polycarbonate grill instead of the fabric grill, but we won't be talking about that. Not important. Check out the other videos if you want to see that. But the sonic changes, the differences in the performance, it boils down to a couple of things. First, computational audio. So in the whole setup between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 beam, the number of drivers, the number of amplifiers is the same actually. So you have five active drivers and five amplifiers driving those drivers. The number of phase arrays actually has increased from three to five. So instead of just the left, right, center channel, you also get the height channel as well. And what this does is that it uses the CPU, it uses computational power to um, map the sound to change the sound slightly and to delay some frequencies to combine some frequencies to trick your brain into thinking that hey there is heights channel sound coming from one speaker bar itself and that's why this guy is capable of producing atmos sound effects as well as you know a little bit of surround when you listen to this guy if you could listen to some of the recordings i've made you will actually realize that hey actually the sound does appear to come from the sides and maybe a little bit to the top as well. So the first phase array has changed. It's increased from three to five. Um, and with that, it comes with some uh, cancellation at some frequency response ranges. Um, I can't be very specific about it, but you will realize that at some point in time when it's trying to simulate a sound response, um, say from the rear, you will find that one frequency is cancelling out the other while it's computationally trying to uh, replicate that surround sound effect and the sound actually drops a bit. The bass response drops a little bit in that specific area. Um, it's hard to replicate that and to record and show it to you because uh, it is not quite possible to um, recreate those kind of things over a stereo mic, over a recording through YouTube. Now, the second thing that they have changed is the speech enhancement. So one of the things that I've noticed about the Sonos Beam Gen 2 when I first started playing with it is that the sound, the, the, the speech is coming across as a little bit clearer. Now, there is a switch. 
if and, and this, this applies to the Sonos Arc, the Sonos uh, Beam Gen 1 as well, which is speech enhancement. Now, when you click on speech enhancement, speech comes across as a little bit clearer. Now, with the Sonos Beam Gen 2, when you turn on the speech enhancement, the whole machine sounds completely different. The speech comes across as uh, very, very prominent. The whole mid-range has been lifted quite a bit. I'll explain about that uh, when we get to the frequency response curve so that you get a better understanding of what it actually does. But the important thing to note is that speech enhancement is a real thing now. It is no longer just a, a gimmicky feature that you turn on and off without uh, realizing. Now, the next thing that we have to take note of is that the base response is actually uh, is actually stronger, but uh, if you look at my Sonos Beam Gen 1 recommendation, I actually mentioned to bring down the bass response quite a bit in the EQ. But for this particular guy, because of the first point that I brought up, the face array, right, where there is some cancellation, I didn't want to reduce the bass much at all. In fact, I actually added a slight bump. And combined with the fact that the speech um, enhancement actually leaves the whole mid-band quite a bit, if you reduce the bass EQ, it will actually um, you know, send the whole frequency response a little bit lopsided. So a couple of these changes combined to make the whole setting a little bit different from the Sonos Beam Gen 1 if you have been following that in my previous video. So if you have upgraded from the Sonos Beam Gen 1 and moving on to the Sonos Beam Gen 2, the setting, while not drastically different, is actually different to achieve the best result. So let's get back. So how I'm going to be doing this today is that I will be going into each of the changes and show you how it impacts the sound response. So I'm going to be bringing up a curve on the screen now. So if you look at this um, yellow curve here, this is the frequency response of the Sonos Beam Gen 2 in stock form. Meaning to say you take it out of the box, you start playing, this is the response. Now, from the, this end to this end, this represents the frequency at 20 hertz. So this is the bass response. Then it moves up to about 100 hertz here, and then it moves up to about 1 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz right at this end. Now, at the 20 hertz uh, range, that is the treble part. So if I could break this into uh, maybe for simplicity three parts, this is the bass response, this is the mid-range, and this is the treble response. All right, so if you look at this yellow curve and you see that maybe there is a bit of emphasis on the uh, re bass region, so there is a slight peak here. This peak is at about 100 hertz. Now, if you were to add a subwoofer to this, you will see that this end will actually get lifted up and you'll get more bass in this region, whereas the rest of the curve might move up just a little bit. But today, we're not going to be talking about the presence of a sub or not. Now, the next curve in blue, which I'm going to bring up, is actually with the stock configuration, the stock beam, but I have performed true play. So in this blue curve here, you'll see what true play does to the Sonos Beam Gen 2. And it surprised me a little because the true play actually didn't do much at all. So it seems to imply that Sonos thing that um, the stock configuration is actually good enough for my environment. So it did lift up a little bit uh, just over here between 70 and about 110 hertz or so. So there's a slight boost in the bass. But otherwise, if you look at the rest of the mid-range and the treble, not much is being done. So I'm thinking, right, this is what the Sonos engineers are doing. And what if I want to change this curve to flatten it out a little bit so that the response is exactly how the recording is intended to be, right? So let me remove the blue curve and I'll bring up an EQ curve in orange, right? So if you look at this curve, this is what I have done to the EQ. I have applied a bass plus two and a treble plus four setting right in the Sonos S2 app. Now, what bass plus two does is that it tries to lift up a little bit on the bass response and it lifts up more on the treble side. So in a way, you will see that the curve um, is trying to be flattened out a little bit, but you know, sort of going crazy and lifting it to a plus 10 or plus 12 and bringing this to maybe minus four is not going to look uh, very flat. And bear in mind that bass affects maybe about this point onwards 
and treble effects about this point onwards. So in other words, your mid-range is still going to be unaffected and it will still appear a little bit peaky, right? So it's a smooth response if you move down here and you move up there. So it's still not as flat as one would like it to be. Uh, okay, let me try to move this. I think it's interfering with my eyes. Let me see. Ah, maybe this is better. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so the next one that you're going to be looking at is actually um, here. So this is the speech enhancement. I have just removed the curve with the EQ. So I've turned EQ off, right? And I've turned on speech enhancement. Now, this is the Sonos Beam Gen 2 speech enhancement. Just one button press on the now playing screen, right? And you see what it does is that the mid-range gets boosted up quite a bit and it goes on to right to about uh, 2 or 3 kilohertz even. So the human voice, right? Actually, male voice starts from maybe about here. Uh, so the male voice end is lowered a little bit. So uh, less of a boom, less of a bass response so that it doesn't get that muddy and you'll be able to hear uh, voices, vocal ranges a little bit better. So it, it's more intelligible. And the bass res well, the mid-range response is actually then boosted up slightly. So if you compare this purple curve here, which I'm going to highlight now, it looks flatter than the original yellow curve. And bear in mind, this is just one button away. Speech enhancement, click on. And that's all you do. Right? Now, I thought, uh, well, all these settings, they are not independent, be it uh, true play on or EQ on or speech enhancement on. And I went one step and I turned on EQ settings, which is the bass plus two and the treble plus four in combination with speech enhancement. And this cyan color curve is what you get. So you can see that in the bass region, it gets lifted a little bit and in the treble region, it gets lifted um, slightly more. So if I were to turn away the purple curve, you will see the cyan curve being uh, now a lot flatter than the original yellow curve, which is peaky at about this region here, and which is lower at about this region. So if you wanted to hear the treble or the high ranges a little bit more, you actually have to turn up the volume on your Sonos Beam Gen 2, right? And when you do that, when the bass kicks in, it's going to get a little bit too loud. So what happens is now we are actually flattening it out a little bit from here to here. So you'll be able to hear everything quite well without bumping up the volume, all right? So this is pretty flat as it is already. Again, like I said, you don't actually have to use these settings on their own. You can combine them and play around with it. And so this is exactly what I have done in the next curve, right? This red curve that you have here, which I'm highlighting, uh, actually has true play turned on as well. So this is almost everything in. The Sonos Beam, speech enhancement is on, EQ is on, and true play is on. So in order not to confuse it, let me remove the stock, right? You can see that from there, uh, true play, turning on true play is adding only a little bit more uh, to the base and bringing down the mid-range onward just by a smidge. So not a lot of difference. So specific to the Sonos Beam Gen 2, you're not going to be seeing a lot of difference uh, when True Play is on or not. But again, this is my setup, my room, uh, my distance, my listening position. It may not apply to you. True Play may do a lot more for you. So for those of you who don't want to fiddle around with all these settings, run True Play with an iPhone, with an iOS device, and you will probably be good to go. So this setting, these suggestions are for you to try out to see if it returns a better result, returns a better listening experience to you beyond what Trueplay can do for you. And these are just my recommendation in my environment here. May not work for you, but use them as the baseline. All right, so we've gone through all these combinations. I'm going to pull up the stock again and I will turn off the rest. Very simply, this is the original in stock configuration of the Sonos Beam Gen 2. The bass and maybe reaching into the human voice, uh, the male voice uh, region is a little bit peaky and the treble is a little bit subdued. The mid-range is just about here. 
And if you follow my settings, bass plus two, treble plus four, uh, loudness is on, speech enhancement turned on, you will be able to get this side curve here. And this is a flatter response, all right? A little bit better bass response below about 70 hertz or so. Um, the mid bass and right up to the male vocal range is um, suppressed a little bit. And from there, everything else from the mid range to the female vocals, to the treble, to the high, high treble is lifted up significantly. So if you remove the original yellow line, and if you look at this side line, right, you will see a frequency response that is very flat, pretty flat, right, by all counts. Now, when you add a sub, this part here is going to be increased, okay? And then you get a really nice response all the way from 20 hertz right up to 20 kilohertz. So hopefully today you have understood um, my video and the principle behind each of this setting. The highest, highest impact setting in the Sonos Beam Gen 2 is actually speech enhancement. And it is easy to set. You don't have to go through the menu. You just go into the now playing screen, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So depending on the material that you are watching, you might actually uh, be able to change the sound very easily, very quickly by just using the speech enhancement button. If you're listening to music, I would suggest take it off. If you're listening to a soundtrack or watching a movie, I would say you turn on the speech enhancement. And your setup is going to be different, right? Uh, depending on where you sit, where you place the bar, the size of your room, the furniture in the room, whether the furniture is hard or soft. Is it a stone table? Is it a wooden table? Uh, whether you have a rug or a carpet, whether your couch is small or big, whether you have a high ceiling or you have a standard ceiling, whether your wall is plaster or brick wall, whether it is... There are just too many variations, right? When it comes to um, sound uh, setup in your particular room. So... My setup here is going to be different from yours, likely to be different. In fact, it is definitely going to be different from yours. So use my settings as the baseline and you tweak from there. And how you tweak, watch the video again if you have to, to understand what each of the settings does to your setup. So if you found this video helpful, please Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of in-depth review into wireless audio file products, especially Sonos. And if you are really benefiting from these videos and this kind of content, it would help if you contributed a little bit to my coffee fund on my Patreon account. I'm going to be linking the QR code right here. You can scan this or you can go head down to the video description below where I will place a link to my Patreon account where you can make a small contribution to keep me and to help me uh, produce such videos that will help you. And I will see you in my next video.